Hi everybody, I'm Clay Mantvik. Today we're going to team up with a focus on coaching. And the underlying message is simple. If coaching high school sports were an easy job, everyone would be doing it. But the fact of the matter is, in today's society, we expect a great deal from our coaches. Not only do we expect them to win, but we expect them to be role models and disciplinarians, mentors and parental figures. And of course, someone that can provide a positive experience for the student athlete. Well, now that we've identified a few expectations of coaches, let's talk about what coaches expect of you. Whether uh, they're on the floor, uh, in the classroom, in the hallways at school, or even out in the community, um, that we kind of hold them to a higher standard. And uh, we hope that um, the people that come and watch us play uh, hold themselves to that standard as well. Well, I would expect them to represent our community and our school and um, just like I would the kids. Is this something that I'm going to be proud of tomorrow morning? Am I going to be proud of my behavior? I can't be a parent to 15 kids and their parents, so I try to make sure that they understand where I stand, uh, what my philosophy is, and what my expectations are. You're a part of this community and we expect that you bring positive things with you in everything that you do. At the high school level, the focus should be on the lessons that teach the student athlete to be successful, far beyond the playing field. Unfortunately, and sometimes more often than not, the coaches judge strictly on the number of wins and losses they have in each column. Winning is great, but it's not what coaching is about. It's about the chance to make a difference in the student athlete's life every day, regardless of the outcome of the game. She's got to move. Stops. Shot. Good! And I don't want to. I don't want to judge the success of our season on wins and losses, and whether we made it to the state tournament or the section final. I want to. I want to judge our kids um, on whether or not they came to work every day, and from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, whenever that may be, did we get better as a team? I have observed a couple of my peers walk away because they just couldn't handle the intense scrutiny of the wins and loss column because the focus went away from what the values were in the program and what the priorities were in the program and it, and it became about um, scholarships, uh, opportunities, scores, playing time. It became about other things than what the sport is supposed to be about and what sportsmanship is and what the values we're trying to teach young people. We've experienced a lot of wins on paper, but I think we've experienced a lot more wins in terms of individual kids experiencing success. You know, those fun times that you have, those memories they won't ever forget. To me, those are the wins. I've had the opportunity to realize that it isn't really all about the wins and losses. It is about the developing the relationships. It is about uh, being a positive role model. It is about developing young men and, and young women and, and helping them learn how to handle themselves as adults, especially in competitive situations. To be able to model how you, how you can handle yourself, how you can behave uh, when the pressure's on and, and things are getting competitive, I think is a real gift that you can give to those younger kids. Well, the coaches that are the best coaches are always trying to push their comfort zone. They're trying to get better as people. They're trying to get better in their profession. And um, I think there's a lot of people that that uh, are out there trying to do that, that maybe get passed up sometimes because they, they don't always win when, when the people feel they should be winning. I think when the players observe um, coaches talking before a game or if we're at another game and there's another coach there that we can sit and talk and they'll go hey you were talking to the coach from Central you know you, you're friends with him you know I think it's yeah you can be friends with you know your with your rivals it's okay and I think that's another way to lead by example. You no know, we might not uh, like one of our rivals but you have to respect them you know you gotta you gotta sell it to them that you know what they're they're probably great kids just like you are and even though when you step on the floor or on the field or whatever you're doing um, it's okay to have those rivalries and, and to raise your level of play but you also realize once the final score is on the scoreboard then you shake hands and you'd be proud if you gave if you gave an effort like you feel uh, you did your best on the floor um, 
you can feel good about the outcome no matter if you won or lost the game. Um, you know, a lot of our kids are multi-sport athletes and they, they know these kids from other towns. And I think they've developed a healthy respect for the people that they're competing against. Sometimes the people who don't uh, understand how that all works are the people who aren't actually directly involved in the activities. And how about the officials? Why is it that we expect perfection from them? Shouldn't we realize that just as players and coaches make mistakes, so will the officials? And what's all that yelling about? No, you didn't. You told me you wanted 30. But then I said to Jimmy, I said, give us the ball back. He can't give us anything, Go Talk to me. And I'll, when our kids start griping about officials, oh, that's the first thing we'll talk about in a timeout. Like, we don't need to worry about that. We need to worry about what we're doing. And they're not out there. To, call, to make bad calls. They're out there to do the best they can do. And yeah, everybody makes mistakes. You know, how many turnovers do we have a game? Well, if we have 20 turnovers in a game, well then are we gonna say the officials can make 20 bad calls? But this, this official in this game is doing the best that they can possibly do for, for the, the game or activity that's going on. We all know that we're not supposed to yell at the refs. That's not how it works, but everyone gets emotional, but you've gotta know how to rule yourself back in before you let it get out of hand. I think our coaches have, you know, kind of lost it for a minute. You know, what, you didn't see that? What do you mean? And I've noticed, and I, and I caught myself a couple times this year, that when I got verbal or um, animated, I actually heard my players go, yeah, coach, tell them. And I had to go, wait a minute, you're not leading by example. Look, they're watching you. So why do they do it? Why do coaches coach? The question is hard, but the answer is easy. We do it because we love the game and we love the kids. It is one of the most rewarding things that you could ever do. It, it has had a tremendous impact on my life and, and hopefully on the kids that I've worked with. Be out there for the kids, be out there for the love of the game, and, uh, and do your job. You are someone who, who can give the kids an experience that they hopefully won't ever forget and it's all positive. So it's a, it's a big job. I think the same is true of every teacher out there. Um, anyone who's working with kids in any job. It's just like the influence you can have on them and the paths you can help them choose. It's so important. And if there weren't anyone out there that were doing that for the young people, I don't, you know, it's sad to think where, where we could possibly be. We hope that we've given you a better indication of what it takes to be a coach at the high school level. It's not just a seasonal position. It's a 24 seven commitment that requires patience, communication, listening, and learning all year round. But it's also an opportunity to make a difference in a young person's life. I'm Clay Matvick. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the game. We are the champs. We're going to act like the champs. We are the champs and we'll be the champs in about two hours. I just wish I could trade places with you. What a great opportunity. Let's go. One more, baby. Yeah, let's go. Best time of my life.